Okay, so today is February 9th, 9th 2013. We're on our way to opening day. No, I'm just kidding. We're on our way to the DVAX Fan, Fan Fest 2013. And um, I'm really excited because we have a lot of new guys on our team. We traded away guys that were, well, superstars. I don't know. How, yeah, superstars, but they weren't really. So we uh, got a lot of new guys, and it's going to be a fun season, fun spring training, fun everything. We got a new jersey and all that kind of stuff, and this weirdo is ready too. Weirdo, what? Hey, we're going to Fan Fest. We're going to Fan Fest. It takes us forever to get out of the house, but we're on our way. Fan Fest 2013, I think it's going to be a good one. I think uh, that we've got good players this year, and this could be our year, hopefully. Let's keep our fingers crossed. And the temperature is nice today. It's not hot, not cold. Thumbs up. It's too cold, too cool. snowy. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so next time you see us, we're going to be at the Fan Fest. So until then, peace. Bye. Oh, yeah, I'm not okay. So we'll check out the face. Oh, Baxter! Come on! You're done! Baxter. Mavis. What is Baxter doing? Baxter is just... Fish out. Glad to see him safe getting out of that snowstorm on the East Coast. Made it into town. Coming up at yeah. is our next Q&A session here at the Subway D-Max 
Fan Fest stage located in center field right under DBTV. We have High Heat, Ian Kennedy, Wade Miley, who really should have been the Rookie of the Year, and J.J. Putz are going to be coming by right about 1.30. So we'll have the pitchers up here on stage at 1.30 with the folks from Fox Sports Arizona. Joe Borowski, Jody Jackson will be here as well. We'd like to see you here. Make sure to come on by. Grab a seat if you want. We're going to get that going about 1.30 with the pitchers. Ian Kennedy, J.J. Putz, and Wade Miley, who again should have been Rookie of the Year. 1.30 here at the Subway. Some guys try to be laid back. I've kind of figured out when I'm a little bit more laid back, at least in my mind, my body's going to be aggressive. I'm going to be where I need to be. So I find too many times I get in trouble when I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to do too much, trying to hit an extra base hit instead of just hit the ball harder, trying to, instead of just letting it happen. So you kind of just at times try to take a step back, but you can also get to the point where you're not putting in the effort or you're, you're taking it a little too lightly so you got turned up. So you're always because trying to find guys heavy medium. Do not tag up on a catcher. I mean, I mean, that, that's that was, not. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, that was unbelievable. Laid back guys don't do that. So I know you've got the inner intensity and competitive spirit, but you either a have such a control over it, or never let it out that when you're watching you on the field, it's almost as if a a, a game in April is equal to a playoff game for you, as far as demeanor is concerned. I'm Right now, it's not any of these guys. 
I guarantee you Miggy would say he was if he was up here. Does Miggy ever stop talking enough to be able to run? Oh, well, look at him. He's trying to take a picture. He's talking over there. <laughs> I would have to say Adam Eaton is one of the fastest guys I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. We play with some fast people, but he is. It's impressive to watch him get down the line. He plays hard every day, so it's, it's going to be fun having him on the team. We've got time for two more. All right, I have Jim over here in the same area to the... Hey, Jim. How's it going? Yeah, i got a quick question. Is Gibby as intense as he looks? He, he is. And, uh, he, he, he's, he tries to bring the best out of all of us and figures out how to do it. So, yeah, he's pretty intense. We didn't make it that easy. We didn't make it that easy on him last year either, so. <laughs> last one. All right, we'll close it out with James right here. Here you go, James. Thank you, guys. What an honor. Thank you to the organization for taking you know, the time to do this kind of thing for the fans and whatnot. Um, Goldie, I just want to tell you, all my friends in San Francisco, every year it is just this, this wonderful one back and forth thing. And just when you came in and just we did what you did the last couple of years, I just want to say thank you for bringing all the excitement. Mr. Kubel, I, like you said, Tara was my guy. You've totally warmed up to all of us, I'm sure. And yeah, we really enjoy you guys as a team. You're a great team. Thank you. It's a great way to end it. Thanks, everyone, so much for coming out to do that fan fest. And we'll see you here. saying I'm not coming, but then I was like, I'm coming, you know. I'm going to have fun editing this when I get home. Let's get him to get over here. Who, Cliff Pennington? Yeah. He'll probably come over here. Hold your hand. Hold your hand. Get to that where we win, you know, eight or nine out of ten, and really give us some ground, you know, whether in the division or above 500. It, you always seem to gravitate right around that. You've uh, you faced Martin Prado before, right? Yeah. 
give me a give me a give me an idea of what it's like. That guy doesn't strike out. He's an old school player. It's like Joe DiMaggio. The guy doesn't strike out. Puts everything in play. He can work a pitcher's a pitcher to death. Give me your recollection of facing Martin Prado and how tough of an out. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. He, it's hard to get him to miss a pitch. I mean, you could make a bad pitch and you know he still finds a way to put it in play. And you know whether it's an out or whether he finds enough to you know drop it in somewhere or you leave one over the plate, he can work in counts and make you make a bad pitch. And the next thing you know, he hits it down the line. It seemed like when we played him, he was either down the right field line or the left field line, and he just knew how to keep the ball there. But just talking to a couple pitchers when we made that deal, it's like, well, finally we don't have to face that guy because he just seemed to give everybody fits. I yeah. think it is, and a lot of people like Justin Upton, but this, I, I think you guys got a hell of a ball, ball player back. I mean, this is a ter- this is terrific pro, and he's a great leader. I mean, everybody says the, the world, the talk the world about him, you know, in Atlanta, and then he comes here, he's going to play third base. It was a weakness for you guys, and. And I, I just like the fact that he's just such a tough out, and he just doesn't give in. He doesn't give the bats away. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the type of player that you know, Gibby and the organization likes, is the, you know, the ball players, they call him. Cody. Cody you know, Ross, the same thing. Yeah, and ever since the way guys are just you know, grind it out and aren't going to give the bats away, compete every day, give 100%. And, you know, that's the kind of ball club I think we were in 2011. You know, we come from behind scrappers, and I think they're looking for guys that are you know, ready to buy into that. And uh, I think Prado, for a lot of fans, is probably a little under the radar you, know, you, you don't hear a lot about him but for guys that are around the game definitely know his value and what he means to the team. Giants go out and win the World Series the Dodgers have spent a small fortune Dad. to try to turn their team around how do you how do you see your guys place in the National League West given that you're just a year removed from being the, the defending division champion yeah that's what I've been telling people all offseason I think the NL West is going to be one of the most competitive divisions in baseball this week you know how San Diego came on a little bit yeah. last year. Obviously the Giants and how they play, and, and the Dodgers are yeah. putting a lot in all the people that they brought in. Uh, but I think we, you know, we fit right in with them. We've never really been intimidated by any of the teams in our division. Even when the Dodgers made that move last year, we, you know, we played them well. I think we swept them fair place right after we made that deal, and uh, we played the Giants tough always. And we're just, you know, making sure that we can win the games that are winnable in our division. I think we'll be right where we want need to be. I had to, you know, you look at this organization and they just, you know, they're keeping everybody. They're tying up, like Aaron Hill just got tied up to a nice contract. And, you know, once Martin got here, they gave him a nice contract. The Mickey last year, he signed. You know, I think around baseball, people look at this as an organization. It's a class organization. You know, if you if you play well here, there's a good chance that you, you could stay and, and have a good career here. Absolutely. I think the people they have in place, the ownership of GM, coaching staff, I think they really work well together. I think they enjoy working with one another. So I think that they're... You know, trying to build upon that and getting some, you know, cornerstone pieces in. And the catcher's obviously a huge role, and Miguel's one of the best ones in the business. Okay, he says he's fast. <laughs> <laughs> is, he not, I mean, is he not one of the slowest players in Major League Baseball? Uh, you know, I think if you were, uh, you know, to put him in a race against somebody, you might be surprised. But he, uh, I mean, for what he does, he, he never really gets to show off his speed. I mean, if he... Uh, you know, he does have a few triples. I know they always put it up on the board that um, he has a few triples. And, uh, you know, I think a race might be in order. Just, you know, he could wow. prove it. And he could, you know, we could get a couple people out there and see if that's something he'd be willing to do. Yeah. I'm just trying to get him to steal a bait. <laughs> oh, he stole two. Yeah, on double steals. And, and his entire career. This I mean, he stole two. He's so. never the green light. That's, yeah. and, and to be honest, he is always looking for the green light. If, if the coach has ever mistakenly put on the green light, he would, he would be aware of it. What do you think he runs the